Amen. It reminds me of the other one that, uh, that Jesus was crucified, that he made the tree that he was crucified on. Amen. It says all things were made by him and, and for him and without him was not anything made. And there I is. See the delay? Yeah, so can we fix that and get me off there? Thank you. Fired the hardware. <laughs> Amen. I don't know about you, but I like when I get in my car to turn it on and it runs. And when it doesn't, something wrong. You know what I mean? How am I doing? You got me off there? Well, just shut that screen off. That's scary. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you all. We love you so dearly. And while we're having all these wonderful uh, blessings that are going on, uh, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and bless you. This is going to be an interesting new year, though. God has been telling me in my prayer time and my time with God. Hopefully, he's been telling you, too, because we're all talking to the same God, aren't we? <laughs> but he's been telling me this year is something great in the spirit. Positive is happening. What the enemy's trying to do is he's trying to rush his coming on the scene before his time. Now, you might not know that, but Satan's always tried to hurry up his announcing of the Antichrist. But thank God, it says only he will let until he be taken out of the way. And you know who he is? It's the church. It's not the Holy Spirit. I used to, you know, when I went to Bible college, depends on who the teacher is. They have some kind of pet teachings, and I'm, I'm not putting them down, but one of the pet teachings in Bible college is that the Holy Spirit's removed off the earth after, with the rapture of the saints. And then the earth goes into no restraining at all. No, here's the key. I love this. In the dark ages, do you remember those days? <laughs> Maybe you had some. That's the ages when Catholic Church took over and they hid the Bible in the monasteries. And the word was no longer an open vision for people that's off the street read it or have somebody tell. You had to go to a priest or the church in order for you to get it. So the word of God was hidden. And the Bible says the word of God gives us light. So if the word of God is hidden in monasteries, what floods in? Darkness. The age of darkness. Okay, now, what you don't know is we call it the Dark Ages. The Bible was put in a hiding place. Satan almost won. Almost won. But then a fellow named Martin Luther came along, and he thought, are you kidding me? I'm a human being. I need to read about my God and not have to go to some institution to do it. And so he started the Reformation. And he believed that you could be saved by faith and not shaken the priest's hand. Hello? you got to realize that. Now, let's fast forward all of that in a slow way. All the way through the Dark Ages came to Renaissance. Do you remember a term called Renaissance? An awakening? I mean, Satan is trying to have his wake. We had our Renaissance. And you know what happened to create that Renaissance? The Bible began to be printed and put in the commoner's hand again. And the Bible says, the entrance of my word brings light. So what is happening? The enemy's trying to do this now. He's trying to get the Bible to be put aside for us to dwell on other things, new age, other teachings. Here's one. I love this one. The Anunnaki. Remember ever heard of the Samaritans? The Samaritans. Uh, the Samaritans had this group come down, fallen angels, and they landed there. Here's what the false teachers are teaching. They say, well, the teachings of the um, Samaritans are older writings than that of the Bible. Duh. Duh. The Bible was written in the 1600s. Hello. This is thousands of years ago. Here's what happened. If the fallen angels landed in Samaria and they had to read, write down, have the people write down their gospel, how they saw things. Now, who's the liar in the Bible? Satan. He's a fallen cherubim. I like to throw out these things so you'll maybe study them. A cherubim is a lizard-like angel. 
Okay, look up Webster's Dictionary. Look up Wikipedia. If you, I don't like the name, but look it up. It'll talk about a fiery cherubim, and there are reptilian. Now you might go, well, my Bible didn't teach. Oh, yeah, they're the one that taught you that our angels are little babies flying around with little, you know, things, and the devil's so big. Come on now. These were angels designed be, by God to work. Only to work. This is very important because it'll go with the Christmas thing I'm telling you. So everything God created up to the time of man were all worker bees. Angelic worker bees. Can I use that term? Their job was to get everything ready and work with God and get things for his man. So we forget. God said, stopped everything. It says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion in this beautiful earth. This earth was made for man, not for the devil and his angels. Now, don't lose me here. Maybe you didn't know that the cherubim and seraphim were that kind of being. Now, I'm sure they probably clouded themselves up. But we're not talking about Gabriel here. We're not talking about any of the others. We're talking about Lucifer's bunch. God when you see a Lucifer bunch, something that's of the enemy, it doesn't look pretty. How many know that? Yeah. All right. So going back to the beginning of this thing. So these fallen angels have been working hard to produce an alternative gospel. Something aside other than the truth of God. Going back to the Samaritans. So you'll hear people saying, all the writings of Samaria are much older. Absolutely. But they're not of God. You see the difference? And they deify the fallen angels as gods come down to man. So if you ever hear that, just laugh. Because God's gospel is older than time. He just didn't have it written because man is such a work. He didn't get him into a position because man has to obey God. Finally, they got to a position of obeying God and could print the Bible. Years and years and years because Satan's hindering spirits. One more thing and we'll get into this lesson. It's not very long. Okay, and that is you need to realize that in the Old Testament, the enemy has really hindered a lot of people. And it was an absolute miracle. For the Father to send his word into the earth. Psalms 107 verse 20 says. And he sent his word and it healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. Who bears record in heaven? The Father. The word. And the Holy Spirit. Those on camera. The Father. The word. And the Holy Spirit. But the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. That we would behold his glory. The only glory of the Father, full of grace, full of truth. So God had to come right into the Slitherville, into the earth, and have his son being born of a woman, a little child. And this is called the birth of the seed. Everyone look at somebody and say, the birth of the seed, the gospel of Christmas. All right, shall we get into this? We can't get me off there. Can you shut that screen off? Seeing something different. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Back up here. Thank you. All right. So we're going to call this subtitle as we had to take a little step for Christmas. The word became flesh. You need to know the miracle of it. And if you know it, to hear it again. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You got to realize that God, when he created us, everything was a worker bee up until man. So when he created us, he created us for fellowship. He created us to respond to him out of our own free will. He created us in his likeness and in his image so that we could communicate. Now, go back to the time of Adam. 
He walked and talked with Adam. Adam walked and talked with God. Hello? They're on the same level. Now, Adam is not a god, but he's a spiritual being without any fallenness. So he could communicate with God unhindered. Are you with me? He was a light being. God is a light being. Jesus is a light being. Stars and, and all the testimonies. Don't let that term scare you. That means you're clothed in light. And then when Adam and Eve sinned, the light went out. And what appeared is their senses. Say senses. senses. Feeling, touching, tasting, smelling, and hearing. So suddenly Adam is now ruled by what he hears, what he senses, what he feels. No more light, no more trust in God. It's all hiding in bushes, blaming his wife. Tying fig leaves around him, trying to save himself. Now, do you got the picture? So up until the time of the creation of man, every angel, every creation, because there's many different spirit type beings. I'm not trying to get out there too far. I want to stay on Christmas. But there's many types. God made ministering angels. He made seraphim, cherubim. He made workers, angels. He made um, all kinds of different beings, but they were not made in his image after his likeness. Some would say amen. And he made us for fellowship. All the rest were worker bees. Now Satan, isn't that funny? He thought he was going to be promoted. So when he was down here working in the earth for God, he got all full of himself, the Bible says in Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14. And he decided to merchandise and to trick the people that or these creatures that were working with him. He started trying to produce his own beings. cro magnet man and all these things people find. They're not human. They found a lot more, but they don't dare tell us. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. You can go search and find it. But they won't openly tell us what they found. It's freaky. Because these are fallen angels trying to produce a civilization to take the place of God's man, you and I. Now we need to know the beauty of Christmas. Why God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. That he would come and rescue us out of this planet. Now don't look at me that way. You look as if I'm telling you something new. All the way up to Noah. During Noah's time, the earth was so corrupted with these things, God had to flood the entire world and kill them all. He saved who, though? Who did he save? Noah and his children. Hello. Remember this. There's a lot of people teaching the opposite. God never has his children suffer with the wicked. Hello? Never. Somehow you find me a place in the Bible where the, the wicked and the righteous were both wiped out by God. No. You need to know beyond that you know that God has a rescue plan for you and you will not suffer the things that the evil and the wicked one does. And you will not suffer with the wicked. God's going to yank you out of here. There's a rescue plan going on. And Christmas is what it's all about. Amen. You and I, God loves us so much. He took the great risk of sending his son down to provide a means for us. By accepting him by faith, we can escape this fallen planet. Psalms 23 tells us that it's the shadow of death. We should not fear no evil. This is a fallen planet that is going to come to nothing. It's decaying and crumbling. And the reason why a lot of people are affected by that because we have invested time in it. Not a bad thing. Gosh, I've lived so many years and I'm still a youngster. I've invested my life in this world just to see decay and crumble. Yet my Lord told me, this is not your home. Here we go with the song. This world is not your home. You're just passing through. 
Your home is laid up way beyond the blue. The angels beckon me through heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Right? And what's, what's supposed to be happening to the Christian is a separation in your heart supposed to be happening. A longing. Some of us are feeling a longing to go home to be with the Lord. There's a longing. And it's okay. This world isn't our home. But then there are good Christians who have got so much invested here. And that's what Jesus was addressing with the rich man. He says, these riches, God doesn't care if you have riches. He doesn't want the riches to have you. And remember Lot's wife. So let's get into this. Amen. We're going to go to Genesis uh, chapter 3 verse 14 and through 15. Now, the word for serpent here, and I'm, I know I'm talking a lot about the enemy, but you need to be aware. The serpent is, is enchantment. The word is nekash, and it means to enchant, hypnotize. So now you know why he was so hypnotized. That was one of his, he was an enchanter, a witch enchanting person. Satan's a fallen creature. This is not a lizard talking to Eve. This is a full-grown, seven-foot-tall cherubim that had fallen from God. He's absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. And he's hypnotized her to eat of this fruit. So, funny thing is, she was so beautiful, her husband was hypnotized. <laughs> and he ate with her. And both of them lost their inheritance and their birthright. Say with me, only the people born here have the right to say things here. Satan wasn't born here. He took that right from Adam. Jesus got it back. He's called the last Adam. You see, Jesus came to redo what Adam failed at doing. To control this planet. Then God never left mankind out of it. He says now folks. We're partners. I'll do most of the work. You do the believing. You do the asking. You do the believing. And I'll do the work. Because I said I would. I've heard preachers. And I probably did it too. Oh God. You're making God into a Santa Claus. No I'm not. Santa Claus can't even hold a candle to him. All he can do is leave cookie mess and, and an empty glass milk. I'm just joking. You follow what I'm saying? And God has a plan. So we got to think that instead of this happy, jappy, wappy, do stuff that, that we call the gospel that we've been taught for years, actually has been a war over the souls of men. It's been a little death-defying war, killing and murdering, and God is trying to rescue us out of here. Now, the killing and the murdering isn't God. Now, let me ask you this question. I, this is a short message, and you'll get it. Why does the God that we serve seem different in the Old Testament than the Jesus whom we serve in the New? Isn't he the same God, isn't he? Why? See, you need to know this. I, I can ask 90 Christians and only get maybe one or two answers that are correct. Why does God seem different in the Old Testament and different in the New Testament? Because God had to protect the plan of Messiah being born over the people that got in the way and keeping that from happening. So God exalted his plan above the people until Messiah was born, his plan. Once Messiah was born, the administration of God changed. And now it's out of love through Christ. Can you say amen? In a new covenant founded on better promises. Hey, I don't know about you, but I don't think Scott would be happy if he got upset one day, really got upset. Somebody hurt him really bad and he's stomping around. The earth opened up and swallowed him. I'd be, wouldn't allow him to repent. 
aren't you glad we're in the New Testament? So we do need to get a picture of it. So this serpent was a beguiler. It says it. He was a hypnotizer. He had the, so beautiful, he would just mesmerize. There's a good word for you. Eve, are you with me? And so in verse 14, it says, The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this. Now, who's he talking to? He's talking to the devil. Now, serpents, little serpents on the ground, they don't know what you're saying. <laughs> this is a being, okay? Get the idea that religion dumbed this down into a serpent when it actually said this is a being, okay? Because he's talking. And he said to the serpent, okay, you... Are cursed more than all the cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat the dust of all the days of your life. And then he says in verse 15 the first prophecy of Jesus Christ, and I will put enmity between your offspring, between you and the woman, between your offspring, seed. And her offspring see Jesus. And he shall bruise your head. Crush your authority. And you shall chase him everywhere. Trying to snuff him out. And I put it in modern language. So God just spoke to the serpent. And says look at what we don't understand. And this will play out. Because I have pictures of them. One day I want to show you at lunch. I've got some things I want to kind of review over you. Some of these fallen angels. Some of their buildings. Some of the ruins that you, people really don't have an answer. Well there's a lot of underground cities in Turkey. Uh, Darren Kuyu is one of them. And not to bring all this in. But it's very interesting. It will house 20,000 humans. Underground. Now, how do they carve that? It wasn't humans that did it. It was these fallen creatures going to hide from God. Remember, they're going to declare war. So this underground, all kinds of them are under Turkey because of sandstone and all kinds. You can look them up. But when God says, on your belly you shall crawl, and on the ground, you look it up in Hebrew, it means even under the ground you will hide. Now, we have stories, and I like telling you, is this interesting? I hope so. It's a gospel. It's all in here. But there are stories of every kind of indigenous civilization who've come to meet the serpent and his worshipers. Our Indians here, the Anastasi, the, the uh, gosh, the Pueblo, all of these people. Why were they hiding in the hills? Because their story says there was this one day this serpent creature showed up with a halo on his head and started making those people obey him and commanded them to have human sacrifice. Look it up for yourself. All right, and you go, what in the world's going on? This is a kind of traffic God had to bring his son in the earth. So he says, I will put enmity. So do you think Satan was pretty hot that Jesus is coming? Do you think he's pretty irritated and he's going to do his best to stop him from coming? Yes, yes. yes. And he did in Solomon's line. Yes. Solomon had so many wives, he couldn't be saved. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> you know, he lost his, his bloodline bid. So Satan thought he stopped the Messiah. Now it's important we get this. So he thought in Solomon, he stopped the Messiah from being born. Remember, it's all bloodline. God's got to get his son born in the earth. And he has to use human beings. And they're failing on every side. And Solomon, the last hope, it seems, has now fallen. Who's going to, out of his loins, bring forth the Messiah? Well, it isn't a person out of a man's loins, but it would be the seed of the woman. The woman is of the bloodline, of the seed of David, of the blessings of Abraham, of the promises of our father. So God got his word 
right at the beginning, prophesied right in front of the devil. Look, it's going to be a pregnant woman that had no sex going to bring forth the Messiah and he's going to smash your face. That's Carrie paraphrased. Now, I don't know about you, <coughs> but when we walk, <coughs> I want to get to preaching to kind of do that. When we walk in the spirit, we're hidden and the enemy, the serpent, can't figure out what we're doing because there's a cloak over us. And I have all kinds of expressions of that in the Old Testament, children of Israel. They, they were clouded by day so that the heat wouldn't singe them. And they were covered with fire, pillars of fire by night. So it blinded the Egyptians, but gave them plenty of light to see and cook their meals. Hello. So God is our protector on the other side. He's dread terror to the enemy. You and I are to walk in that spirit. So when we get up in the day, Seth, Satan moves out of the way. Because it's no longer you walking, but God walking in you. Hope you got that. So look at Satan. Boom, the seed of a woman. All right. Cover four things quickly. Number one. He came in the volume of the book which is written of him. He was prophesied into the earth. Two, we'll cover this. The pure bloodline. How important it was for the pure bloodline and the birth of Christ. Three, legal entry into the earth. You can't climb in any other way. Satan did that and that's why he's called the thief and the robber. Anyone not entering in by the door but climbs in some other ways, a thief and a robber. If I came to your house and you, you weren't home so I broke in, then I am a thief and a robber. Satan broke in through Adam by getting him to commit high treason and then poisoned him. So you and I can't take our body to heaven. God has to change our body. Because this blood's pu uh, putrated and corrupt. And your body, whether you like it or not, you're just not as good looking as you used to be. Oh, oh we like to maintain it. Maybe put us in some plastic surgery and, you know, just having fun. And the last thing we'll cover... Be it done unto me according to your word. How we know that's a very powerful principle. Folks, the reason why some of us don't get healed is because our mouth has two tongues. And we're, we're believing and confessing and then next thing you know we're talking about why it's not working. Don't do that. Ask God to help you. Discipline yourself. Catch you at that. Everybody does it, but we shouldn't. Say amen. All right. Number one. He came in the volume of the book which was written of him. To do your will. Amen. Oh God. Amen. So the scripture which I don't see there is Hebrews chapter 10. You got a set of notes up there? Yeah. That much should be Hebrews chapter 10 starting with verse 5. It, says, it basically says this. I have come as it is written of me in the volume of the book to do your will, O God. God removes the first covenant and replaces it with a second covenant. So I have come not to do my own will, but to do the will of the Lord. It's actually these scriptures, Hebrews chapter 10, okay, 5, 6, and 7. And it's not in my notes for some reason. Amen. That's okay. All right. A couple of points. Number one, God sent forth his word into the earth. Who became the only begotten son of the father. Full of grace and truth. Everyone say amen. amen. So God spoke his word. And the word became flesh. So we know that there was in any physical contact with a man and Mary to produce Jesus. No, it was the Holy Spirit releasing the word in her womb. And she said, be it done unto me according to your word. Two. The word became flesh so he could walk amongst us, feel it, pay the whole entire price. Have you ever noticed those words at the cross? It is finished. He didn't say it is finished, but I left a few things out. It's finished. You have to declare the finishedness of it. 
You have to declare. One of the things that I wrote a couple of days ago in my notes that I send out to everybody, and it, get on the messenger, okay? So you get them. But it says, all things have been put under his feet, yet we see not all things put under him. Now, you remember in Hebrews chapter 2 reading that? Well, let me tell you. What it is, is who do we belong to now? He's the head of the body, and we are the body, and he's the head. So the reason we don't see all things put under him is it's our job to put the devil out of our life. We do it with him. How do we do it? By yelling and screaming until our voice... No, you just simply say, Lord, I belong to you. And Lord, Satan wants to try to convince me that he can still harass me. So I'm going to put you on him. And I'm going to put you on him in such a way. And then you teach me how to overcome that. So our job is to drive the enemy out of our family's life. Out of our life. And to put a stand and refuse to let his temptations tempt us. Say amen. It's our responsibility. God's not up there saying, don't you touch him. Not if you're bad mouthing everybody or doing something that's causing it. See, we live in a very unclean planet. Beautiful. Very tempting, isn't it? But if we're not careful, we'll go back into our old habits and then open a door and we'll end up losing something. How many know that enemy's a thief? So he's not here to do anything but to steal from you. Now, folks, if you didn't have anything to steal from, why is he bothering with you? You have plenty to steal from. That's why he tries to convince you that you don't have all your victories yet. No, you have an absolute victory. The problem is we're fighting in our own strength. Not releasing God to do the fighting. Hello? Hello? Christians don't know how to eject God out of them. They don't know how to project. The old people, I call them the old people during the latter rain. I mean, a hundred years ago, they called it impartation. To impart God to somebody. Hello? I call it projection. Because you can project God out of your mouth. You can project God out of your hands. You can command. You can do a lot of things. But we're not been all that exercised in it. So we got to get better. Say amen. This is what Christmas is about. First of all, God had to be prophesied into the earth. Because Adam lost the earth, remember? And God was outside looking in. How would you like to be a parent? And your kids were in your living room just a minute ago. You went to the, excuse the expression, to the back room. And you came back and they were gone. A little note says, I got them. Double. So you can see that God's love for his man is more than some of our religious opinions. For this religious, religious it was our disobedience, Sherry, that Adam ate of the tree. It was him disobeying God that God changed us into the creature we are. Folks, that's not correct. God's always been a helper, wanting to fellowship with us, wanting to keep us from being destroyed. Why, if through a simple disobedience, would God say, hey, just because you did this, you're going to walk no more. You're never going to have a dinner again. God did never do that. Here's the deception. It was something in the bush that poisoned his body and made it unredeemable. Kind of sounded like the days of Noah, doesn't it? And so you and I get a new body and we get trained. So Jesus came so that we would receive. Merry Christmas, everyone. Christ mass, a celebration around Christ. Amen. And then thirdly, Jesus was born in the ultimate sacrifice. He came for one reason only, to redeem mankind and to die in our place. Everyone say, I love the Lord. And so, God sent his word, and John 1, 1 through 5 says this. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. 
He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was the life. Now listen, life. And the life in us creates what? Light. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. And the light shines into darkness, this dark world, in the darkness of men's heart. And the darkness did not comprehend it. How many here know the natural man can't receive the things of the spirit? They're a foolishness to him. That's why God wants us to have a born again experience. Amen. Then it goes on further to say, and, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. And then verse 14 says, and the word became flesh. And dwelt among us and we beheld, we looked on, we focused on his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Second point, the pure bloodline. Very important. The pure bloodline has no curse in it. So what you need to know that when Adam committed high treason, Satan's nature entered him. We call it sin. Everyone say sin. Sin, S-I-N, means the nature of the devil. Sins, S-I-N-S, means what we do because of that nature. That nature causes us to be sinning. Hello? So you were a sinner. Now you have Jesus in your heart. Now you're a child of God. If you're continually sinning and practicing, maybe, just maybe, you're not letting God control your life. Most likely. And so we have a lot of wonderful Christians that love God, but they're totally carnal. They're drinking, partying, doing all this. Oh, God loves me. I'm under grace. Now, I'm not putting anybody down. We all go through things. We all struggle. But the idea is, if you don't have a clear understanding who Jesus is, you can't focus on him. So what the enemy's done while we're all kind of having fun, is he blurred our focus of Jesus. So we see him as religious and not as who he's written of in scripture. Say amen. So we need to know he had pure blood. Now, let me ask you. You guys know this. I know you do. Who passes the bloodline on when a, uh, when a mom and dad, they have a child? Who passes the bloodline? The dad. the dad does. What was the thing that Mary didn't have? She didn't have anybody in a relationship. So there was no human blood passed to her. That's why Jesus is called a miracle. What happened? Now, it's very important. We'll cover this again. When the angel of the Lord gave the package of the birth of Christ, it came like a package. And he spoke, blessed are you among women. You know, in your womb you shall have a child and he shall be the savior. And he's declaring all what God declares. And then she says, how can this be? I know not a man. And this is the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. He's the one that brings the word to manifestation. It says, the father thought Jesus spoke and the Holy Spirit brought it to pass. Amen. So when he spoke, the Holy Spirit brought the embryo into her womb. No human blood. All divine blood for the purpose of shedding it for you and I. And not only that, after he shed it, he keeps on cleansing us with it as we walk in the light. Don't believe me? First John chapter 1, verse 7. So we walk in the light as Christ is in the light. The blood of Jesus Christ continually cleanses us. You know, one of the ways in which people get rid of bacteria is slam it with a light. Infrared light kills it instantly. You have an entire infrared lighting system emanating out of you. So next time somebody will hand you a little sickness or something. Hey, no, I refuse to be sick. Release the light on it and kill the virus. Can I do something like that? Yes, you can. John G. Lake did. 
Many others I've talked to. I've done it. You can speak the word and literally pulverize. But you got to be serious. You can't just, well, Lord, I'll take authority over this and go all about your way. No, you got to meet with God. You have a covenant with him. All right, I'm meddling. Let's move on. Pure bloodline. All right, go with me to Luke chapter 1, verse 26. We're going to see, I just quoted most of it for you. We're going to see the angel come to Gabriel coming to Mary, delivering the word. And she says, and I want you to go all the way down to verse 38. This is Luke 1, 26 through 38. Go all the way down. I haven't got time to read it all to you. It says, then Mary said, behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. And it says, then the angel departed from her. How did she get the word in her womb? She spoke it. She agreed with God's word. God says, this is God's gift to you. Now listen careful. Now you have to say, be it done unto me according to your word. If I have a word of knowledge here, and I see there's somebody here that God wants to heal. You should say, Lord, be it done unto me. According to your word, I receive my healing. Hello. Remember, our busy mind will get you to forget stuff. Just do what she did. Be it done unto me according to your word. How about getting up every morning and saying that? Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Be it done unto me according to your word. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. And then go about praying. I think I did that in Montana, didn't I? Hi, I'm carrying a full of the word. <laughs> Something like that. You know, did it on the mission pills too. I don't know why. It's not like I have all that great intelligence. All right, so let's go on. So you can see there was no sexual involvement dealing with Mary. So her bloodline was pure. Amen. And so in that, we go to the next one, the third point. Legal entry. Legal entry. If I was to come to your house and come into your house, I would have to have a what? An invitation. Yeah. God was outside the planet. He came in by the volume of the book or prophet sitting requests of God. We have not because we... So you can see the predicament. God's outside the planet. Oh, he's God. Why would he be? Because God keeps his legalities correct. He gave you a free will and he won't touch it. He'll influence it, say, hey, I'm a better choice. But he won't force your will. And he won't force the people in the earth that lost God. Unless somebody cries out to the Lord and invites him in. Now here's what you might not know. It wasn't until Genesis chapter 4 that people started calling on God to come back into the earth. Hello. And others cursed God and told him to stay away. Quick picture for you. When Adam and Eve left the garden, they took their family with them. They produced. Part of them went after God and the other part went after Nimrod and after the devil of course Satan had a tremendous hybriding program already going so you forget in Africa we have million year old mining operations that they have discovered just refuse to talk about them because nobody knows how to deal with them. Well, it's in the scripture. Satan fell. He loved the earth. He wants the goodies in the earth. He started mining. And he started raising kind of creatures to mine for him. Because he didn't want to work. He was a worker bee all his life. Bless God. God's going to make him the leader of this planet. God had other plans, didn't he? Merry Christmas. You see the beauty in Christmas now? It's a little bit more than a little baby Jesus. And a bunch of people gathered around. Pure blood. Now legal entry. Go with me to John chapter 10. You know this scripture. Verse 
Verse 1. Verse 1. Now, when Jesus said, most assuredly, what do you think that means? Pay very close attention to what I'm about to tell you. How many never knew that? So whenever you see a most assuredly or, you know, something like that, it's drawing attention. When you see Paul say, I beseech you to get this. We kind of religiously go, yeah, I got that. I know that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we get beat up every other week because you don't know how to maintain that. All right, so let's go on. <laughs> I'm meddling. I got to get off that. All right, so legal entry, verse 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold, come be born naturally in the earth, come in by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is... A thief and a robber. Who's the thief and the robber? How did he climb in the earth? He stole the Adam's birthright. You see, you have two birthrights. Actually, you have three. You have your birth here as a human being. Gives you authority in the planet. Two, you have your rebirth authority. Can you say amen? Being born again, you're in Christ. But the key is staying in Christ. It's, it's not hard. That's why we meet with him faithfully. So he helps us stay in him. Staying in him makes your life better. Easier. Business becomes better. Hello? It just is. But Satan doesn't want us to know that. He wants us to oh, be fighting for every inch of victory. And we're all doing this until we're so stressed out. You looked at some of those old Pentecostals. Nobody taught them the word, but they believed God. Literally, you can look at them. Their whole facial features look like they've been through a war. I'm talking about Pentecostals that have been around for 30, 40, 50 years, battling and fighting and praying. I knew some. Some Beulah was one. Mary was another, her daughter. But you could see on their face and on their body the battle scars. And there is a time for you and I to when we battle in the spirit for other people's souls, you don't do the fighting. But the old Pentecostals, nobody told them that. So they'd be meeting for hours and days, and which is good to meet with God anyway. But they'd be battling, thinking, punching the devil and doing all that kind of stuff. When all the time they need to just get up in the morning, meet with God, get saturated with God, and then say, go out before me, Lord, like you said in your word, and clear the way. Amen. Now, what kind of sweat did you break on that? The key is that some of us, we need to write these things down so can, we can go through them like the Lord's Prayer. Hitting those bases, covering those areas effectively. So we have the glorious victory that God who his son won for us. No one can steal it. You see, if I put something in God's charge, do you think the devil can get through God to get at it? So every day I put you in God's charge. That means you have to wiggle out. <laughs> out of God's protection. Hello? Everyone look at your neighbor and say, I'm not doing that. Uh -uh. All right. Good, you're laughing with me. I love you so. Okay, so legal entry. So look at he that does not enter in by being born here, climbs up some other way is the thief and the robber. But he who enters by the door, now he's going to tell you how he had to come, is the shepherd of the sheep. You see, he came in natural birth. Now there's other scriptures that say that. He said. He didn't come by water only. He came by water and by blood. Now, that is a very powerful statement, let me tell you. Amen. He came by water. In other words, ladies you, that have children, when your child is in your womb, there's this big sack of water. He's, they're swimming around. You know, you know what I mean? And then they're birthed, okay? 
So you have to come by water, birth, then by blood. Amen. Hello? Amen. Amen. And everybody thought that water was baptism. No. It's natural birth. So Jesus came by water and by blood. And he came for what reason? So that he might take our sins. He might sacrifice his life. And he might wrap the whole thing up in a nutshell and say, it is finished. Now stick with me and I'll get you out of your kids. Go tell people that I have a rescue plan. I have a boat that I'm filling up. It's called the Ark of Rapture. Now go tell people, your neighbors and your friends, whether they like it or not, you don't want to miss the rapture and you don't want to miss the things that God has for you. Now if they want to argue with you, that's fine. But just say, hey, at least you heard it from me. Yes. And then walk away and change the subject. Every word you talk about God never does return to God void. doesn't fall to the ground. It goes. Now, so when I've been in hospitals where there have been comatose patients, where they're not mentally aware or physically aware, they're spiritually aware. I walked into a room. I, I remember one of my bus drivers, bless her heart, her son got in a, a motorcycle accident, gave his heart to the Lord just before doing it. And lost both the legs, lost everything. He was just a carcass from waist up to the head. No arms, no legs. And he was laying there. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He says, he can hear you just fine. Just tell him what I told you to tell him. Tell him that I've accepted him. And he has a new life at home. Make sure that his heart is right and to release everybody. And as soon as I started telling him that, you could see his countenance change. That he realized that and he let go. And he was able to go home. So folks. Sometimes when you're sharing with people. And they look half asleep. Keep sharing. Because their spirit's never asleep. And the word goes down into the spirit realm. Don't talk to people's heads. That's why I never argue. When somebody wants to argue. It's their head trying to justify something. I look at them and say. Yeah. I just. I'm quiet. Because the conviction of the Lord will tell them. Hey, you're being foolish. Why are you justifying sin or doing wrong? You don't have to justify anything. Jesus did it for you. He says, by faith, he justified you. And that means just as you've never seen. To be justified means just as never sinned. When God justifies you, you're just like you never sinned. Who took your sin? How much sin did he take, Dave? He took your past sin, right? Took your present sin. And he took your... Future. So don't go out there and act like the devil. Thinking that he's got your sin. No, that's your flesh. That's a different story. He's got your sin. But your flesh to create problems, he's going to have to deal with you about that. All right. Next, last point. Oh, look at... Merry Christmas. How many here love this season? You, have you noticed that some people's hearts are more open? They're ready to receive. Don't be like so many people. We have some, so many are watching. Don't feel in a rush this season. You're not to rush around. Don't try to do everything you tried to do last year and the year before because it's tradition. Don't do that. Instead, go to pray and ask God what he'd have you do for this, this season. He might have you do something completely different than everything you traditionally did. Be ready for that. Okay? We, we, get, we cure all those ruts. You know what a rut is, Sherry. Ruts grave with the ends kicked out. <laughs> People get in ruts because they're comfortable. When they pray, they get in a rut. Oh, Lord, thank you. Cover my family. Oh, thank you. Boy, I did my prayer today. You're in a rut. God wants to see your head, not your rut. <laughs> I got one over on you, brother. Okay, so here we go. Last point. And, and the point is just, it's really cool. So let's, let's go ahead and get it. Be it done unto me according to your word. Go with me to Luke chapter 134 through 38. Here you have Mary answering. Okay. We read it, but I'm going to read it again. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I know not a man? 
And the angel answered her and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. For with God nothing is impossible. Remember that. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be done unto me according to your word. How about greeting God every time that in the morning? Behold, Lord, I'm your servant. Be it done unto me according to your word. Then drop down to Luke chapter 5. Verses 4 through 7. Now Jesus was calling his disciples. And his disciples had had some interchange with Jesus. One of the things they noticed that when Jesus spoke. If he did what he said. Great things would happen. Be it done unto me according to your word. Now Peter and the gang. I call them the gang. Sons of thunder, they were out fishing, caught nothing all night. Tired, wore out. Jesus was preaching the Sermon on the Mount. And after he was done, he says, hey, Peter, get the boats. You know, I'm going to have you go out and get some fish for everybody. Now, do you think Peter's mind was really caught on fishing again? Do you think he was a little worn out and tired? Hmm. But look what he said. It's a beautiful thing. Okay. And then he said, and when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered and said to him, Master, I've tried to fix it. It won't work. Sounds like people who can't get something to work. Did you pray about it? Well, not really. Well, I'm just teasing you. Before you go hollering and saying things can't and can't, won't, did you pray about it? Okay, moving on past that. Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, let me do it the way he did. Ah, nevertheless, at your word. See, he wasn't being disrespectful. He was tired. Why do people, when they're tired, become disrespectful? Listen, if I correct you, I don't want an answer, sis. <laughs> you can answer later. And the reason being we're on camera, you got to remember that, okay? Oftentimes I would say to my son, you know, you know, I know you're, Dad, I'm tired. <laughs> Listen, if you're working in church and I ask you to do something, if you're tired, do it. God will bless you. It, but don't. And I have to say this. Don't come back and tell me all the reasons you can't. Because that would be an argument and Satan would get in on that, wouldn't he? So if I have him tell me and I'm completely wrong, just smile at me and do it what you know works. Okay? But do not challenge authority and be disrespectful in the presence and especially God's house. It will bring a curse upon your flesh. You're liable to get a few more gray hairs. You're liable to buy a dye that won't cover them up. Move on. Okay. <laughs> See, I love you, Carrie. Okay. All right. So here we go. Then it says, Simon says, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and the nets were breaking so that they signaled to the partners in the other boat to come and to help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to what? So what you don't understand is Jesus was blessing them because they led him his boats. Whenever you give something to Jesus, he always won't be indebted to you. He will bless you because of it. That's why some people in the world, even though they don't love God at all, they still give to the needy and they get blessed. It's a principle that's there. It's like gravity. Hello. So you could be the most ornery, nasty person. You do, you, I know somebody like this. They're so rich, they don't need God. But they know they need to be kind to others lest they don't have any kindness given back to them. So at least they know the sowing and reaping thing. 
Folks, this is Christmas. All that Jesus went through was to rescue me and you. All that Jesus has done was for us. And at this time, let us all say, Father, let it be done unto me according to your word. And so let me encourage you. This is what God told me to tell you. This season, God's going to put people in front of you to witness to. You're wondering why they're there. Suddenly they said something out of the blue and suddenly they're friendly. Remember, God wants you to share about Christ. All right. Did you get something out of that? Give the Lord a praise, will you? Amen. I got my left foot.